Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Fairuz and this is my eclectic book diary. So today's video is going to be a review of 50 Words for Rain. This is a book or a novel by Asha Lemmy and it is actually her debut novel and it is a historical fiction story. Before we get started, this video is going to be two sections. The first one will be the non-spoiler review part and the second one will be uh, containing some minor spoilers and some major spoilers because um, I do want to talk about the end of this book so yeah, um, preparing you for that. So let's begin first with the non-spoiler review section. So let's first talk about the title and what the title means. First of all, in Japan, they used different kind of words to describe the rain uh, because it, it rains often there. And so they have 50 words to describe rain in general. And the author decided to name this book 50 Words for Rain. It's kind of a metaphor for the challenges that will face uh, the main protagonist of the story. So the story in general, it handles a lot of situations and a lot of topics, including the binds that connects us as humans, the binds of relationships, the strength and softness of people. It also handles love and loss and um, the journey of identity discovery, for example, and I could say maybe even finding the true meaning of freedom or trying to find the true meaning of freedom. Now to give you just a small idea of the story in general, the order events of the book starts uh, in Kyoto, Japan uh, in 1948, where we meet Nori and her mother who is driving her off to her grandparents' house and her mother actually leaves her there without telling her that she's like never coming back, that she's actually abandoning, abandoning her there. Nori is actually eight years old at that time, so we follow the journey of Nori or Noriko from the age of eight through like a few decades ahead. I forgot to say in the description of the story in general that it is also a story about Akira, who is Nori's brother or Nori's half-brother. And we will see the dynamic of like a brother and sister, how they evolve. That is a major aspect of the story, but I'm not gonna, of course, go into the details. But that is a very, very important element of this whole book. Now for the writing style in general, it's not that dense. Uh, it's definitely not that complicated but it also has like um, this sort of a simple beauty to it like there are a lot of lyrical feeling to the whole like uh, book that is on its own has like a special softness uh, that contrasts the cruelty of uh, a lot of events that happens in this book Another very positive point that this book has is the fact that it's kind of an original idea to like to the events that happens right after World War II and the representation of the fact that Nori is actually a child of, which I didn't mention, uh, I should have mentioned first, Nori is actually the daughter of a married Japanese aristocrat uh, but with her uh, African-American lover so it is a very complicated situation right from the start and following the the life of Nori who is considered an outcast by everyone around her especially people who are uh, supposed to be family so I really appreciate uh, the author Asha Liming for choosing um, such a unique point of view and to uh, write a story about something that is not very much 
discussed in like um, the realm of historical fantasy, especially events that has to do with World War II, uh, and um, and especially when people talk about Japan. And yeah, it's really, really nice to see that sort of representation and uh, to voice out such a story. Yeah, that's, uh, that's on its own a, a huge deal. And also to come up with such a profound point of view for a debut is very impressive. And uh, Asha Limi herself, she said that she started writing this book when she was 16 so yeah it's honestly very impressive she finished when when she was like 20 or 22 i'm not sure and uh, she mentioned also that all of this experience has made her learn so much and she grew in the process and uh, yeah i really appreciated the the effort and time uh, that were put into this book there's also a lot of music embellishment for this book and uh, that comes from the fact that Asha herself, she's like a very knowledgeable in like classical music and she she really loves that genre of music and there is a lot of references uh, for specifically classical music and um, there is a significant importance to music as well in this story and um, I loved that I really enjoyed seeing the the impact that music can uh, have on on people in general so up until this point all of the things that I have mentioned um, make this book a kind of a special book to me but I have to admit that my feelings, like at the end of the day, my feelings for the book are very, very mixed. And the reason behind, be, behind that is the ending. And since I don't want to spoil anything for this section, I will just say that I was enjoying the book up until two thirds of the way, but then things started to shift and I didn't really walk out of the experience of reading this book with the the love that I imagined this book would uh, commend from me. So yeah, and I think I have to explain my reasons behind that in details because I don't think it's fair of me, especially in this specific situation, to just like say that uh, I walked out of the book not really knowing or sure how to feel about everything and just like move on it's just it's not fair to gloss over um this like everything and just like um end things here and that's why the next section will contain a lot of spoilers so if you haven't read the book I think you can click out of the video right now. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is where we part because now we're going into spoilers. So let's get into the details. So up until I would say two thirds or even more of the book, I was completely enjoying everything, feeling my heart being ripped out, feeling also all sorts of emotions, you know, it is a heartbreaking story in general. You see uh, a lot of mistreating, a lot of unfairness and injustice that's like that goes on for forever, or at least it feels that it goes on forever. As I said before, Akira, who is uh, Nori's half brother, is kind of the only one who is on her side. He tries his best to actually be with her and to protect her and take care of her and all of those things uh, even though he's far from perfect but at least he is considerably um, a very decent human being especially if you compare him to their grandparents he is uh, as i said not perfect as a brother but he has this cold strong vibe to 
him, but he's also deep inside a very caring and uh, loving person, especially to his sister. But um, yeah, um, and he is very intelligent and also very musically intelligent as well. Going through the story, Nori does have a lot of challenges in her life, to say the least. There are some terrible events that happens especially to her and people treat her in really like the least to say is in an unfair way but it's honestly sometimes it's it's just disgusting and like each chapter you think things will be a little bit better but also there is always something bad that is just waiting to happen and we see that no matter what happens at the end, her brother is actually um, there for her. Uh, as I said, he's not the best, but it's nice to see that complexity of human beings because human beings are not perfect, but he's, uh, as I said, um, still a decent human being, not like his grandparents, I don't like them. Anyway, so all of this and um, right like at the last third of the book, Akira and Nori will have an accident, a car accident. And unfortunately, Akira dies. I think through all the hardship that Nori goes through, nothing at the end of the day managed to break her. But this one, I think it did you feel the agony that comes with that. The accident happened when she is like 16 or something like that. And after that, her grandparents, especially her grandmother, uh, actually kind of excel her from all of Japan. So she leaves Japan uh, and she was supposed to be or to go to an old friend of her and Akira. Her name is Alice and she lives in London. She, she was supposed to actually travel there, but she doesn't. She just keep on traveling uh, within Europe for like about seven years, uh, where she never actually settled in one place until uh, William, who is also an old acquaintance. I'll keep it at that because I don't like him at all. He's like he gets on my nerves. Anyway, he ends up like uh, spotting her uh, one day after seven years and... Uh, she decides after that to actually just go and show up in front of Alice's door and um, Alice, she, she like considers her as a sister, she loves her so much and she just wanted to protect her and she welcomes her with open arms. She just doesn't want her to leave again, she wants to protect her, to embrace her in general. As heartbreaking as, as it is, it's still like I was still considering the story to be a success. I was still really like in the story with all the bad things that are going on. I just, I was, I was heartbroken, but that was actually a, like, a strong point for the whole story. And then we meet Noah. Now, Noah, he is like this um, simple music teacher, a young music teacher, actually. From the moment that Noah is introduced, I got this feeling that this is not gonna end well. And I didn't like that. I felt that, um, oh, maybe he is gonna be the sacrifice character type of a thing. Someone you introduce just because um, you're gonna sacrifice them for another cause in the end. Things start to evolve and yes, he fell in love with her and she ends up falling in love with him as well. And then she receives a letter from Japan that says that her grandmother has died and her grandfather is actually already dead and that her grandmother has left all of her possession and all of her like estates and things like that for her and she, that she should return to uh, Kyoto and like receive her inheritance or whatever and all of this happens like two weeks before her wedding to Noah so uh, she decides to go and then she goes to Japan and then of course we know that her grandmother is not actually dead and that she was the one who planned all of this so she she, she can convince her to come because she's dying and now there's no other heir to, to this family apart from Nori and then she goes and finally meets her grandmother and she said that and her grandmother said to say things about family and the responsibilities that Nori now has to like uh, level up to and that she now she needs to actually settle in Kyoto and take her grandmother's place and just marry some of like those people that her grandmother chose for her but she, she can pick one of those chosen ones anyway and then she passes out and she thinks she's dying and she 
sees herself in this like garden where Akira is waiting for her and she thinks that that's it, she's gonna be with Akira. I swear I have a point of telling all of this. It's just that all of this happened and then she wakes up and after she just has declared that she's never gonna stay here, that she's actually going back and live with Noah or whatever, when she wakes up from that, she goes to her grandmother's room and she just like said, okay, I'm taking this and I'm gonna stay here. So we reach the point of why I am actually upset with the ending. In those last chapters, Nori decides to stay in Japan and to give up on her love and to give up on Noah, which I already predicted that this is gonna be the case, that Noah is just a gonna be a sacrifice for this whole point. And she's gonna marry there and just like be the head of the family and she only is doing this because she's like, she's gonna change this family for the better. She's gonna eradicate like injustice and unfairness and, and she's gonna be everything that her grandmother is not. So yeah, I know for a lot of people that that specific point is why they might love the story. But for me, and it could be that I am in the minority, this point actually destroyed the story for me. Because in my opinion, I don't think that this suits Nori's character. Like the whole character we've been building for Nori, I don't think that this suits her. I don't think that uh, if Nori was um, like a real character that she would choose this one. And even if she would even if uh, i am wrong and the actually the character uh, arc dictate that this this is the choice that she will make at the end i choose not to believe that and i don't like the ending i couldn't like the ending i couldn't like the fact that she that she will sacrifice her life for this family and even though logically speaking some people might say that this this is just a parallel situation to emphasize on the fact that her brother has like um, sacrificed so much for her and to be with her and now it's her time to sacrifice things and to take responsibility and to honor her brother in general. Sorry, but I have to disagree. I don't think that in order to honor somebody you have to I don't know, y you have to sacrifice all of your life in this particular manner. Especially in the case of Nori where she just like suffered too much from this family and I think um, it's not fair at the end that she, she will sacrifice her life and herself in this way. I am not I'm not all about that. I don't believe in that mentality. And I honestly don't care if she's gonna change this family and she gonna make it better and um, this way is better because now she is in power and things like that. And I don't care for the fact that, that maybe she actually wants to be there so she could protect uh, Noah, for example. I think that in the end she let her love for her brother um, to just overcome everything else, including her love for Noah. I don't think she made the right choice and that is my opinion. I know, logically speaking, a lot of people may think that this is the the most reasonable choice. This way she has power, she, she, she could do something to change things for the better. But I don't think that is fair for her, I don't think that is fair for her child, and I don't think that is fair for Noah, and I don't think and that is the, the only way that she can honor her brother either. Yeah, I didn't like that. It did affect how I felt about the story. I walked out of the story just feeling disappointed. This is one of the few occasions that the end actually spoiled my experience with the book. 
generally speaking, I'm more of a journey type of a person where like, if I enjoyed most of the time with the book, I probably will end up saying that I liked the book. But in this case, I wouldn't say I disliked the book, but it definitely spoiled how I felt. And yeah, so that's why I have so many mixed feelings. And saying all of this, I will still say that I actually recommend the book for someone who's trying to actually expand uh, on like new stories and new perspectives, things that are not um, mentioned and not discussed that much in the realm of historical fiction books. I think uh, that this is still a unique perspective and with the writing style, which is very beautiful in my opinion, uh, the book deserves to be read, even though I didn't end up enjoying the book as much as I wanted, but I still think it's worth reading. I feel that the writing style and the uniqueness of the concepts that Asha Lemmy is trying to represent in this book is enough uh, for me to feel easy about recommending this book and uh, it's actually worth checking out. Anyway, this was a long video, but I really needed to talk about um, those specific thoughts. I needed to get them out of my chest. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.